Lynn Brown, Brown's Custom Black Mesa, Saddle Trees, Saddles, Protector Pad, and a Corrector Pad. I've been working with horses after riding 3,000 miles on horseback in 1982 ever since. I made my own saddle for that trip. I learned a lot about saddling to bring back three pack horses with no white marks, no sores, no loss of hair. And uh, after that, I've learned a lot more over the last 30 some years. The uh, thing we're going to do today is take a look at a cactus roping saddle, give a basic analysis of it from looking at it while it's complete and a roper traded it in to me. We will then take this saddle apart later on. You'll see the bare tree that's in this saddle. You'll see it on some horses. In this industry, everybody's buying a pig and a poke. Saddle maker buys a saddle tree. He never sees a picture of it on a horse. If he, saddled, if he traveled to the saddle tree maker, he'd not find a horse to put it on to see what it looked like unless he brought it with him. So, Essentially, tree maker shows no pictures on the horse. Saddle maker doesn't put it on the horse and show pictures of it. Everybody just wants to sell you the bag and you hope that there's a pig in it ready to roast later on. There's no pig most of the time. Show you some of the problems in a basic saddle like this and almost every one you go by today because of, let's call it current fashion and sweating of the brows. When Little Orthoflex Saddle Company and myself was larger, selling more saddles, doing more business dollar-wise than larger saddle companies in this country, they were all sweating at the brow. So they started playing saddle fit. The 45 degree saddle tree became very popular. 45 to a side is a 90 degree tree. Everything you see has it. Part of the problem now is if they want to change, all they can do is grind off a little of the fork and make it a 91, 92, 93 degree, full quarter horse tree. They flatten the angle even more, which puts more rock and curve in a saddle tree front to rear when they turn the bars out to flatten the angle. That's what's happened to the 45 degree tree 90 degree, I should say, as opposed to the old tree, which was much steeper. Contact at the bottom stops the pinching at the top of the bars in front. Let's turn the saddle over, look at it underneath. It's nothing unusual right here. It's got a rigging, it's dropped, it's got a rigging plate, which is good. The rigging plate stops right there below the tree. It's got a very low fork. It's low looking because the seat's raised. It is reasonably low fork as well, but it's not going to hit the horse because it's too tight at the top. And so when you have all of a five and a half, almost a six inch gullet right here, and if it was a six and a half at the tree, you'd be lucky. That's all you have. That doesn't in itself pinch the horse. That only pinches the horse when the bottom of the bars do not make good contact to the horse. So let me turn this over. See what the bottom spread is on the bar. The foot of the bar and how long this foot is has a lot to do with the geometry of the saddle. Forget the 90 degrees, forget the uh, <clears throat> flare and the angle. As usual, this is 14 inches. That gives them their 45 degrees or thereabouts, their 90 degrees, 45 on each one. Pretty easy to take a square get a good idea of what we have going on here. I want you to go put one of these squares on your horse. See where your contact is. Because essentially that's what you're dealing with almost, except we have a little bitty channel right here. A little bitty one right there where we don't 
quite hit the bottom here. But you'll get an idea if you can find a 45 degree horse. And uh, essentially what you end up with is being tight right here. Tight right here. And uh, you don't have the contact right here that you should have to hold the saddle up in front. So that has put curve in the saddle tree when they turn it out. They end up with curve front and rear when they have turned the tree out. What was steeper at one time for saddles was when the bar of the tree was clear up here. Then it held the tree up on the horse's back and the gullet didn't have the tendency to pinch as it does now. Because when you don't contact here, you drop down, you pinch here. There's another problem in this saddle, which I see in more saddles than not today, and even some older saddles. And that is, if I run my hand right through here, I feel a bump right there. It is a knot. There's a knot on this side too. Not as much in the front. Because almost all Arizona bars, and that's what they went to to keep them from breaking with a full notch in the bar on the bottom side, only have one notch in the bar on the front edge where it thickens on the underside. It's got a little bitty bump there at where the bar starts in front and it gets thicker, but there is no groove in the back whatsoever for the tree, for the stirrup strap. So that stirrup strap right there is making a real nice bump. And does the horse feel it? He feels it through a three quarter inch felt pad. It starts to squish the stirrup straps thinner right in there because of the pressure. If they don't get thin enough to stop the bump, which is dropped down also into the skirt. So the skirt gets stretched right there. Stirrup strap bumps sore horse. Right where his back comes up the most. Every stride, every reach of the hind quarter, the back comes up one to two inches right here. That means he's rocking off of what? Set of knuckles right there into the horse. You palpate a horse, you look at where your stirrup where your stirrup straps are when you're saddled. Take your saddle off, palpate the horse this far apart on the back and watch him drop three or four inches. Do you think he's going to bring his hindquarters up under himself when that happens? No. He's not going to get them in there anyway if you're pinching right here because of your great 90 degree tree, 45 degree angle. Saddle tree makers are set up to interchange forks, candles, and bars. All the same angle. 45 degrees on the bottom of the fork, 90 degrees. They can sand off a little of that fork and they can make it 91, 92, 93. And turn it out even more. Like I can't hold my hands that flat. Like this. Which then puts more rock in the tree front to rear. And causes pressure in the mid back. It works up and down every stride of the horse and pinches, interferes with shoulders as it does. That's what gives you white hair. It's the movement up and down in front as the back lifts. They have no explanation in a saddle as to what they do for the back as it rounds, as it lifts when you get on and the gut tenses. So this is basic cactus saddle. The only other little problem not as bad as I've seen in some custom saddles is this lacing and this groove between the skirts. It's way inside of the bars. Cactus and many others don't bother to even attach the skirts there. So you can see the bars clear over here. We've got a second ridge made here and uh, no skirts attached, thank you. We can about pull them off this tree. So when 
you have a backbone that can't fit between here. If you have any spinous processes on the back of a horse, he's being bit right here. A line of pressure on each side. It goes through a pad, folks. Pads are not really padding, they're a structural component until you get to fleece. You put a double fleece pad with nothing in the middle of it. On a horse, you've got true padding. You've got pressure, it bites right through the layers of fleece, doesn't it? If you're spreading your pressures out over a large area, it doesn't bite through the fleece. Then it becomes true padding. It squishes it at a half pound per square inch. Saddle right pad feels like soft, neat neoprene. 60 plus pounds per square inch to squish it half of its freestanding height. Felt pads are higher, so are most other pads. They do not do anything but keep your saddle dry. All of these problems you see come right through. Protector pad, corrector pad, they all work with this by moving it up some with balance shims, but you can't fix everything. Balance shims that I make start right here, one quarter inch, next quarter inch here, the next quarter inch here. They give you space for the pinch to lift the saddle from down here. Other than that, I don't know what you do. you got a 93 degree tree. My protector pad with the shims will not fix it. It won't work on any horse I've seen. Thank you very much. I've given you a little analysis of the cactus. And uh, if you have any spinous processes here, cut the lacing. You can cut the skirting too if you want to. Because see, it's not really held down. It's not doing anything. So it's just there to cover the saddle tree. We're going to uncover the saddle tree. We're going to put it on horses. And you can see this jewel. As Mark Twain said, it's easier to fool someone that to, than to convince them that they've been fooled. I'm hard-headed. I'm going to convince you. Thank you much.